Hello, so I am here to show you guys how to make some tomorrow pot roast. And I have to mention that this pot roast that I'm about to show you is probably the best pot roast I ever tried. It's uh, my grandma's pot roast, so here we go. Um, when we start with the show, I want to show you the basic ingredients that you need to use. Um, of course, you need to have some onions, nice yellow onion. Um, chop it up to like this. You gotta have some garlic. You gotta have some tomatoes. Wow, look at that Nancy inside. You gotta have soy sauce. You gotta have some vinaigre. vinegar. And here's the tomatoes and onions chopped up inside. Here's a sneak preview of how the um, ensuing um, pot roast is going here, which is what we're gonna prepare right now. Now let's get started. So, as we start the pot roast, I'm going to have a nice sharp knife here. Um, always cut your onion. Thanks, wife. I can get it cut through there. <laughs> okay, boom. Alright. There goes that one in the sink. <laughs> Out here in Cali. Alright. Cut your onion. Get that taken care of. There you go. Do that nicely, make sure it's nicely peeled. Now you always want to make sure that you cut your onion the same way as the grid. Cut that in half. Do the same thing for the other side. Cut that in half. Grab a bowl. You want to see what you're putting into your pot rolls. Now, what I'm doing right now is basically putting together the paste for the pot roast, which in turn becomes the gravy. Now, we have the onions there. The next most important part is the garlic. Some places you can find some pre-peeled garlic. Um, easiest, especially with Chamorro cooking, you know. Chamorro cooking requires a lot of garlic. And you want to try to minimize your time. You know, cooking is a very very um, time consuming thing so pre-peeled garlic is pretty good and as long as it is a pre-peeled garlic that's preserved and all the juices are contained can't go wrong so you want to make sure that you chop it up to a good a good size that way when you boil your meat you're absorbing all the taste of the garlic you don't want to waste that so here's the, the process our goal is to have it looking sort of like this See, so we have the chuck roast here boiling right now and onions and garlic looking real good. That's only the first step. But let me take you back to the process. You want to set your stove to about high. And then after you set it on high, you want to add to it your cupboard. Pull a little bit of oil down because you, know, you always got to have some oil. And put a little bit of oil there just so that you can guisa, or in English, stir the onions and garlic before you throw it on your meat. Now as you can see, this is a kitchen full, very full of all kinds of ethnic foods that the Chamorro food, you can pull from it. It's pretty, pretty well equipped. Now, so long as you have all of our ingredients, you'll be good to go. This right here is a sample of a chuck roast. Chuck roast is one of the best meat you can use for tomorrow pot roast, especially the style that we're making it. So once you have the onions, the garlic, the tomorrow chuck roast, you have the tomatoes, you have the onions, you have the garlic, you're good to go. That's all you need, guys. Um, let me head over here and make sure that I have cornstarch and flour. Now everybody knows this. Babe! Babe! <laughs> Everyone knows the babe is, right? <laughs> babe. I have the flour here. I'm trying to secure cornstarch, which babe should have. My wife, Robinette, should have prepared this for me, but I don't know if she's that. It's okay, I can get it later. Now we see the onions and garlic are just about to come into the simmering oil here. And of course, your mom doesn't want it all clean, but oh well. Let me throw in some chopped onions. Let me show you. Hi. Now here's those garlic that I was chopping a little bit earlier. You want to throw it into that oil. Mmm. 
Yum, me. Right. I, I. <laughs> now you want to throw in the gar uh, the onion. Sort of like, you know, you're going to geese it. Put that in a good oil, uh, good, good heat. And I'll pull this. Maybe a saucer so that I can rest that upon every time I turn it. Now remember, what I'm doing right now is basically the exact replica of my babe got me the corn charge. Here it is. <laughs> Anyhow, this is actually supposed to look like this. So that's the after product. So once you have your onion and garlic rolling, the next thing you want to do is go to your chuck roast, which is right here. So once you have your chuck roast, you want to have a good knife, okay? And you want to make sure that you're cutting against the grain always. But first, let's split this in half. Okay, you see the grain's going all which ways. The best thing to do is separate. Wherever you see there's like, you know, some kind of separation there. From what I've learned from my grandparents and the Antigos, you want to slice through that, cut it through, and then that's, that's your bundle that you're going to throw in there. Because once it's all fried up and cooked, you want to be able to slice that into the pot roast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw this roast into that. Simmering oil and um, garlic and onion. Throw this one. Do the same thing, separate what's going on here within the meat. Throw that in. Now remember when when you do this and you're you've got your onions, your garlic, and your meat simmering, you know, in the in the pot, you want to make sure that your goal is going to look like this. Cause as long as you have your meat looking like that, you're in a good position. You're gonna have to mix some salt into your meat. Throw a lettuce on there. Some black pepper. And after the salt and black pepper, it leaves not much more. What else do we use in the tomorrow recipes? It's gonna be none other than soy sauce. This is the infamous soy sauce. Of course, we use soy sauce, right? So we throw some soy sauce in there. Look at that, how it changed the color of the meat, right? Throw some vinegar, right? Right. And then, tomatoes. Tomatoes are the key. Tomatoes are the key to Chamorro pot roast. So this is how you chop them. Basically, you just take the mothers, you chop them in, in a quarter, right? And for the quantity that we're cooking, we're going to want to chop them in, in one eighth. And what we're going to do is take the uh, tomatoes, basically throw them over the cooking meat, which is again chuck roast. Um, and what we used was the onions and garlic and a little bit of soy sauce and vinegar. And once you have that going, you're pretty much set. You want to cover that pot prematurely. That's what this should look like. And since you've seen what the beginning process looks like for this, let me go ahead and add that to this particular pot of pot roast. And you know how we party in Guam. So let me get this taken care of. Get my 1-8 tomatoes going. Throw that into that section of our cooking. Ta-da! Now, when it comes to onions, you want to make sure that you're, you're cutting your onions for pot roast for the taste. Not for garnishing, not for looks. Not for anything other than taste. That's why I have these onions pre-cut prior to that process. Because 
onions cook differently when they're being simmered from when they're being used as a taste bud. Taste bud, like, you know, baggy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, go this part away. Remember, remember, or in some more, member. This is the goal. You want to have pot rolls that taste good with this stuff, which is Bloody and Nancy, obviously. My own personal best mate, Bloody and Nancy. Remember, when we're cooking um, Dunning de Nancy, when we're cooking um, Chamorro pot roast, the most important ingredient is going to be your soy sauce and your banatli. In this particular dish, the only two additives to our, um, our cooking is going to be cornstarch and our flour. Garlic and onions are given, right? But little did you know that Chamorro pot roast is only given secret by tomatis. Tomatoes are the biggest secret to Chamorro cooking. So, as you can see, this is the premature process of how Chamorro pot roast looks. Here is the Chamorro pot roast, just about prior done, or prior to being done. Now, the big difference is that this is almost done. This right here is way far from being done. The correct way is any way you like it. Um, and in my case, what we're having here is we see two different versions in two different times. But they're both going to taste good. So here's the thing. We're going to have to wait and make sure that your oil, your garlic, your onions, your meat, and your tomatoes are basically being stewed as they say here in America but so long as your meat onions your oil and your garlic is stewing those um, those flavors into the meat you'll be good because that's the first step in the process of making tomorrow pot roast and it looks pretty simple but that's your sauce base and many of you go to parties many of you go to you know functions and, and be like oh wow this is awesome that's the base and the trick is the tomatoes really I mean you look at the tomatoes and you're like why do they put tomatoes tomatoes are what give it that red paste we're not using a choti or so they say acho here in America it's just what gives it that flavor that taste that little redness you know that loving so I want to thank you for looking into making Chamorro pot roast and to everybody and all of you out there who loves Chamorro pot roast that's the first step to making the best pot roast it really is just several ingredients five I believe you need to have oil you need to have garlic you need to have onions you need to have tomatoes and that's it and you need to have the love for the cooking because when you gisa those onions and your, and your garlic when you get your cube chuck roll or chuck steak or what have you, whatever meat you're using, it doesn't really matter. Once you have that cooking, you're good to go. Because once it turns out to be looking like this, and once your onions brown and your tomatoes seep into the sauce, you're good to go for your next step. And your next step is soup. It's just about to come. Um, please watch our second video, which will show you step two in the process.